Dale back with you again and it's time to take a look at something that was a bit of an obsession for me back in the day. Digital video on computer. What magic was this? As a child of the 80s, there wasn't a great deal of choice when it came to watching movies. We did have the cinema, obviously, although my local movie theatre in Scotland had the same size screen that most people have in their living rooms nowadays. For home viewing back then, in the UK, we only had four terrestrial TV channels. Our family wasn't like the cool kid down the road who had Sky TV and one of those B-Sky b, -Sky -B -Square or satellite dishes with multiple sports and movie channels. Growing up then, it was either watch whatever was on TV or go to one of the several drawers of VHS videotapes that contained films recorded off the telly, with the occasional purchased video cassette if we were really splashing out. On special days, birthdays and the like, we would be allowed to hire a video from a video hire shop, but only on special occasions. Around the time early CD-ROM systems and the Philips CDI came out then, the world became totally obsessed with CDs as a format for storing data. Our school library had a couple of Apple Macs with CD-ROM caddy systems and the wonder of a whole encyclopedia on a disc. If I'd seen the internet back then, I think my head would have exploded. I was looking at this new world with wide-eyed excitement. The promise of video on a disc. The magic of video CD. Of course, being young and naive, I had no idea that video had been available in disc format for years. Whether you look at the relatively successful LaserDisc or LaserVision, the less successful VHD or RCA's CED format. This though was the same type of disc that you would put in a CD audio player, but containing both video and audio. It was possible back then to play back video on a computer, but generally in low resolutions and with pretty terrible frame rates as processors couldn't really decode it on the fly until Pentium and MMX type extensions came along. My lowly 486DX2 certainly struggled. In fact, that struggled to even play MP3 files. MPEG-1 was actually identical to the 1988 ITUT H261 standard, which was originally intended for video calling on standard phone lines. And it was the idea of lossy encoding of the video, that's throwing away as much of the picture as possible to compress the file size, checking for differences between video frames to see whether space savings could be made, and using macro blocks and other techniques to give still acceptable video quality. It was a sound idea. You see, a full frame of uncompressed video is enormous. Consider that video is made up of perhaps 24 or 25 of those uncompressed frames in a second, and that would be just impossible to fit on a CD. Ultra HD Blu-ray, Apple TV, Netflix, Prime Video, even YouTube wouldn't exist without those early pioneers of video compression to get us where we are today. Computers back in the day then required additional hardware for smooth playback of full screen video. I remember pestering my parents and one birthday being given a real magic MPEG decoder card. This fitted into one of our PCISA slots and enabled it to play full screen, full color motion video on our computer monitor. Truly the stuff of the future. There were also versions of the original PlayStation that could play video CD films. The Amiga CD32 had an MPEG decoder module add-on, as did the CDI and most of its contemporaries. While movies made the most sense to take advantage of full motion video, there were plenty of computer games that used FMV as well. Some relied a little too much on it with some uh, questionable acting. While most of these games didn't make direct use of video CD technology, they did share the same lofty goal of bringing full motion video onto the computer. Games like Space Ace, which actually originally ran via Laserdisc in the arcades. Easy! We represent the Union of Border Worlds and Vice Admiral... Will Wing Commander 4 was one of my favourites. It had a stellar cast including Mark Skywalker Hamill, Thomas Biff Wilson from Back to the Future, Malcolm McDowell and more. You learn how to make a decent cup of coffee on this tub yet? There was a clutch of spooky games like Phantasmagoria. <laughs> and the seventh guest. Tonight as my guest, and in exchange, I will give you your heart's most secret desire. 
And you know what that is, Mr. Dutton, don't you? I require one thing of you, a special service, a task that I've set up for you. And some terrific, mysterious adventures like Mist, which used QuickTime Video. I realized the moment I fell into the fissure that the book would not be destroyed as I had planned. And Return to Zork. Ah, the sweepstakes winner. I've been looking forward to... No! No! Hey! Some became classics, others not so much. In the West, video CD had a pretty lukewarm reception as a commercial format. You see, unfortunately, a full movie didn't fit on one disc. You could only fit 60 minutes or so of video on one CD, which was a bit of a pain. Needing to swap CDs halfway through a film wasn't exactly a stellar user experience. My video CD release of Apocalypse Now comes on three video CDs. One place where a video CD really took off and was actually quite popular though, even into the 2000s, was in Asia. I went to China in 1997 and got this quality action film. No idea what's going on in the film, but there's certainly plenty of action sequences. Here we have some of my collection of Western releases, many of them from Polygram, a subsidiary of Philips. Not entirely surprising considering Philips were instrumental in developing the format in the first place. And so the legacy of digital video compression and of the Moving Picture Experts group is undoubtedly assured. One aspect of video CD that is still strangely relevant even today is MP3. MP3 music files are a direct relative of this early MPEG-1 encoding. In fact, MP3 literally means MPEG-1 layer 3. Layer 3 being one of the audio layers used on the video CD, Philips DCC digital cassette tapes used MPEG-1, but, well, that wasn't a very successful format, and certainly not as ubiquitous as the MP3 file became. Well, do you have any video CDs of your own? Do you have any memories of video CD as a format? Let me know, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Be safe, and I'll see you again soon.